Hello, everybody, and welcome to Two Cents, episode 60. This is the live undoctored news post show. Uh, I'm not Brian Gillis, if you can't already tell. I'm Stephen Montmanex, and with me tonight is... His good friend, Blake, who is uh, neither Brian nor Stephen. Evidently not, because I am me, and I just said that. But now, Brian tonight, uh, he's got the night off, which after... What is it? Four years of doing this show. Uh, it started way back in 2012 with I think it was with Skyfall. Um, yeah, he has not ever had a single episode off. So you know what? After the many vacations that I've taken and the what the year plus that I've been doing this, I think he's definitely more than earned it. So uh, the duties, ho- the hosting duties, fall on me tonight. And I just slurred a word there. See, normally I would cut that out, but I can't do that tonight. Um, Anywho, uh, you can find us on Twitter. Brian is at Brian Gillis. That's B-R-Y-O-N-G-I-L-L-I-S. And I'm at S underscore MTX. Uh, What this show is, is basically we cover movie and TV news and also VR and tech stuff that Brian is far better versed in than I am. But I'm going to give it a shot. Um, Also, you can find our other content. Uh, The Dollar Review Show consists of our recent reviews of recent releases. Uh... The big one, the last, blah, the last one that we did was for the Netflix uh, double feature for The Little Prince, which just came out, along with Tallulah. Uh, there Wait, was, that just came out on Netflix? What? Tallulah? No, The Little Prince. Yeah, it's up there right now. Really? Yeah, and you should watch it, because I think it's a great movie. I think uh, I, I watched it, what was it, five times? Uh, yeah, on our, our conversations, I probably talked way more about the dub track and just the concept of dubbing, but you know what? It's still, I, I think it's a great movie regardless, and... Uh, yeah, you should definitely check that out. We've also got episodes, uh, a DC-centric uh, double feature for Suicide Squad and the Ultimate Edition of Batman vs. Superman. Uh, we did episodes for Swiss Army Man, Finding Dory, and Ghostbusters. There's also Debt to Cinema, which is our list of shame show. Probably the most popular show that we do, and it's the one that we have the most fun doing. We got one coming up for uh, Brian's pick this week, which is Ricky O, the story of w- Ricky, which comes out this Wednesday. Uh, usually we record that show before we do this one, but I'm still very curious to talk to him about it because that movie, it's it's crazy, man. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we've also got episodes for The Red Shoes out. Uh, we also did one for Catwoman. Uh, an episode I'm really proud of, actually, because we, spoiler, but we both really liked it and defended the hell out of that movie. That is a fun movie. Um, in context, <laughs> But uh, if you definitely disagree, please send us a crap load of hate mail so we can respond to it. I mean, but, but yeah, I had a lot of fun doing that episode. We've also got episodes for The Dirty Dozen and Heaven's Gate. Um, our social media, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, WordPress, Tumblr, and you can listen to any of our episodes at Google Play Music, iTunes, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube. Man, that is a long, a long intro. How does Brian do this every week? Um, yeah, I was going to say, you guys got a shitload of social media. To oh, be yeah. No, we are out there. Someone. Like, we're out pretty much wherever you can find us. And he uh, he manages most of it. And, you know, this, I'm sure hosting duties are not easy. So props to him, especially. He's earned the night off. He's earned this week off. Uh, I usually, let's see, the way that Brian does it is he has headline news, and best I can decipher from these notes is that the main headline is that The Flash has Cyborg. Uh, this is for the the Ricky, uh, Fem, uh, is it Femi Yuma? I, I'm butchering that name. The guy that directed Dope, uh, one of my favorite movies of last year. Um, yeah, the, uh, so we got Justice League coming out, uh, was it November of next year? And then Flash makes an appearance. At, no, no, he doesn't make an appearance. He has his own movie after that. Uh, Cyborg is in it. I guess that's, is that something that gets you excited, Blake? I know you're far more comic book savvy than I am. I mean, <clears throat> I'm excited. I am. I'm interested to see how they're going to fit, uh, the character in. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I'm kind of at that point where I'm like... You know what? Give these characters their own fucking movie. Stop putting, you know, let's take Marvel, for instance. Mm -hmm. You got Spider-Man Homecoming. They're saying, hey, you know what? We're going to have Tony Stark in there. Hey, you know what? There's some other Avenger that's going to show up in there. It's like, if you want these characters to stand on their own, let them have their own damn movie. I do think I understand that putting Cyborg in there is going to possibly help the audience, you know, see who Cyborg is because mm-hmm. he's relatively an unknown to majority of casual film goers. And I can understand that. But I mean, <clears throat> this is a 
pretty big deal. I mean, as we've seen recently, DC, they're, this is going to be their, it'll probably be, what, their sixth film after Wonder point? Woman and Justice League. Yeah, and then uh, the, the Flash, next one, the six. next one's The Flash, yeah, after that. Or, I, I don't know, is Aquaman actually in between that time? Because no. they're both 2018, aren't they? <clears throat> no, Aquaman is, I think Aquaman's at the end of 2018. Hmm. And I think The Flash is maybe in between, you know? I don't know, although somehow the way that Deborah Snyder justifies this is that she says that it kind of works as a pairing because between Cyborg and The Flash, you know, they're the young characters of this universe. They're, they're these young kids with energy, whereas, you know, Batman is definitely dark and just kind of worn out at that point, and uh, Superman, you know, that's Man of Steel. But uh, also, yeah, f coming from someone like uh, Rick F uh, F Famiyua, I... I I, I don't I have a misspelled version of the name right in front of me and I hate that I'm butchering that but because I love dope but I mean yeah for a movie like dope which I don't know if you've seen it yet but that movie has this very crazy just youthful energy to it and that's part of why I love it so much so I can definitely see this pairing working um, as far as you know uh, them pairing up characters like that in movies I think it's more along the lines of just DC trying to play catch up and I, you know, as much as I've actually enjoyed all their stuff so far, like, I love Man of Steel, I really dug Suicide Squad a lot, and the ultimate edition of Batman vs. Superman, that's probably going to be one of my favorite films this year, but I, even I got to admit, like, I do think their stuff, it, it seems like they have identity issues as far as how they want this extended universe to be, um, yeah. but I... I cannot really say whether or not this is going to be the case with this one, just because with the talent that's involved... Um, especially with the director of Dope, it's like, you know what, as a buddy movie, even if it's supposed to be a Flash movie, I guess above all that, or I, I, I don't know what it's going to be, um, but it just seems like tonally that's it, it'll it'll be there at least based on that movie and that they have the right characters there for it. So I don't know if it's an appearance or if it's more like, you know, a buddy movie, kind of like what, uh, what they're doing with uh, the Hulk and the next Thor flick, but... I we'll see, you know. I mean, DC still they still have a lot to do, and they still got to sell people on it. And who knows if Wonder Woman's going to do that? But I mean, it, it's nice that you know these movies seem wildly different to me. Yeah, it's going to be really nice because <clears throat> you can already see how DC is trying to build and make their own comparisons to the Marvel Cinematic Universe because you know you have Wonder Woman, which is going to be their Captain America, because that mm -hmm. is going to be their period piece, obviously. Exactly. And, and I... it's it's interesting because I was skeptical when Captain America, the first Avenger, came out. I was like, World War, what was it, World War Two? I think World it was? World War II, yeah. And I was just like, oh, come on, I'm bored of World War Two. I don't need to see this anymore. And then... Yeah, but it's Joe, it's Joe, uh, I was about to say Joe Dante, totally different guy. No, it's Joe Johnston. I mean, if anyone, like, especially the feel of that film, like, he got it. You know, exactly. a, a lot of people that's put Rocketeer in there, but the joy of it, like, it, it was just, it was there, and it, it's it's not something that you see in World War II films. You sure as hell don't get that in Fury. I'm, uh, Dunkirk is definitely not going to be anything like that. No. So, I mean, it is going to be very interesting to see how we all accept or reject Wonder Woman when the time comes. Well, because... Wonder Woman was one of the big highlights, though, for Batman vs. Superman, so I don't think, if anyone's going to reject Wonder Woman, it won't be because of the character, it'll be because of the movie sucks, which hopefully yeah. is not the case. Yeah. But, I mean... um... <clears throat> no, I agree. No, I, I agree entirely. <laughs> I'm just trying to, like, I'm just trying to sit here and I'm thinking, it's like, you know, right now, it's like, we're saying, you know what, DC needs to play catch-up, and they do, but... If we ask majority of anybody else about how they feel, how DC is handling this, it's they probably say that DC has already dropped the ball every time they've had the opportunity. Oh yeah, I mean, and it's it's pretty bad. It's really sad to see because, you know, Zack Snyder he's pretty talented as a director. Yeah, and he obviously knows what to do when it comes to visuals. Story wise, the guy needs some work, but. Let's take Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. David Ayer is pretty spot on for a majority of his work. Yeah, he did Sabotage, which I fucking I think hated. Majority... You know that. Yeah, I hated we all, the fuck we out all of that hated movie. That. I want to say that I think that this is the movie that we wish we could forget. 
What, and Suicide even, Squad or Sabotage? No, Sabotage. Okay, yeah, no, I mean, because that Fury was the one that got me back on board and was like, okay, this guy's cool right. again. Yeah, he did a movie, and he was like, oh, okay, you obviously know you fucked up, and you need to do a comeback. Mm-hmm. And he did that. He succeeded with that in Fury, and then with Fury, I was like, all right, I'm back. He's doing Suicide Squad, and, you know, we're talking about A-listers and what this really needs to work i feel that the flash is probably going to work best just because it's a lot of relatively unknowns it's very low under the radar you know actors director i mean yeah i know ezra miller he's kind of blowing up now but Mm -hmm. you know you got ray fisher who's the guy playing cyborg and this guy's Literally, his very first film credit is Dawn of Justice. Mm -hmm. So, it's nice to see that they're going with relatively unknowns. And I think that's going to actually help them a lot. I really really hope so. And I think that, like, it could end up being awesome because of that. But I just hope that Warners has the confidence to really stick with that. You know, like, this is the thing. I ended up loving what Suicide Squad was, the version that we got. But I'm not convinced that that's David Ayer's version. And the weird thing is, like, it's kind of a weird mishmash of, you know, Warner's had the trailer company that did the trailers edit the movie, and then they took a David Ayer's movie, and then the movie <clears throat> ended up being a weird blended version of the two. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I really, really hope that at least Warner's can have confidence in their creative talent involved and let them do the movie that they wanted to make, because... I could see maybe how David Ayer's version could have been polarizing and definitely would not have been something that you wanted to sell with families because, I mean, his version, I'm sure it would have been really fucked up. Like, I, I seriously don't doubt that. But, I I mean, yeah, it, it seems like I hope that Wonder Woman, you know, especially with all the shit, the rumors that that has had with someone that worked at Warner saying it's a fucking mess, I really hope that they don't just try to desperately fix quote unquote fix whatever problems may or may not be there and that they at least have faith in the creative people involved because well i don't shit man just i you know i like dc at their best when they're kind of doing their own thing like hey this even the stuff in batman vs superman a lot of the shit people have had problems with i I thought was cool because they at least went ahead and they did it and they did it on their own terms they're not trying to be marvel then there's the trailer for justice league which is trying to be more lighthearted and fun and as good as some of that stuff is, it really does feel like they're just trying to one-up Marvel at their game as opposed to doing their own thing. So, you know, fuck, I don't know. We'll see where this goes, but, yeah. I think that one of the big problems that I'm noticing with the with what Warner, Warner's is doing is that you have Batman who is literally a character who lives in darkness Mm -hmm. he lives in a fucking cave and then you have superman who is literally the epitome of the opposite because he thrives off of the sun the sun gives him energy and the problem that warners is having is that they can't they don't know how to balance the two equally and perfectly that's one of the See, biggest I problems. felt that Batman vs. Superman did that in the Ultimate Edition, although for that version of Man of Steel, as opposed to, you know, a character that's up there and, and living in, uh, you know, taking his powers from the sun. Because, I mean, uh, Batman vs. Superman, that's more of a broken down Superman that, you know, is is very much Nolanified, I guess is a popular term to bring it up. But, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I wonder if we'll ever see Superman, like th- this Superman, become that Superman, you know, the the more optimistic great American hero. But he's gonna have to. I mean I feel that I feel that having It's just like Superman, taking the time to evolve into that journey. Having Superman be as brooding and as, you know, emotional as Batman is it just doesn't work. You know, he's more of the optimistic one, he's the one that looks at everything, he's all like, Hey, you know what? It's okay, we'll figure out a different way to you know, to solve this problem. Yeah, and... but speaking for myself, though, I mean, seeing Superman just have his own struggles in Man of Steel, I mean, that was a lot of what? the stuff that made that mo- me love that movie. Um, oh. That's even some of the stuff which, even though it's not a great movie, that that worked for me for Superman Returns. But, I, I mean, 
as far as you know, my stance on Superman right now, because people still feel that that if Warner's is fucked up. I think he's got to grow into it. I don't think he's there yet, and I don't think that's a problem. This is his second movie. Yeah, Justice League will be his third. It's like if he's in how it. How many more movies do you? <laughs> no, he's in it. How many more movies do you need to give him to grow into the character of Superman? Did we give Christian Bale three movies before he, you know, grew into Batman? No, he owned the role and he nailed it in Batman Begins. Yeah, but you you are seeing different phases of Batman also. Yeah. And we saw different phases of Superman in Man of Steel. Mm -hmm. We saw the Vengeful. We saw the... That we saw almost everything that Smallville brought to the table for Superman. The only thing that I feel that Man of Steel lacked was the more Clark Kent aspect of it. I feel that they didn't spend enough time developing Clark Kent as a person. I Maybe could I, I, I could get into a long conversation about this because I first off, I know you love the movie too, but I think you're wrong. Yeah. But um you know, this is still a new show. We still got to go down a few things on the list. Uh, I guess the last uh, main news item, like or at the top, the first headline I have, I don't care about this one, but evidently they're making another Clue movie at Fox. Ugh. Do you care about that? See, I have not, not seen really. Clue, so I yeah, I, I, I'm not sure Clue? what. No, I haven't, so I would not oh, wow. see what the big deal is. I mean, yeah, that's a bigger deal apparently. I guess. Um, it's, it's, it's on the list of shame. It could be a future debt to cinema. I don't know, but I know it's, it's, I know it's like one of those movies where they did this weird thing where in theaters, they released it with different endings so that, you know, you would catch a different showtime and see a different ending. And I don't, I don't know why it was done like that, I guess, uh, just for fun or maybe a way to boost up ticket sales, but I I don't even know what is on the Blu-ray right now or what's the official version if it's split up like that. But, yeah, that's about all I know about it. I have no idea. I mean, I've only seen Clue once. Or, no, I'm sorry, not once. I've seen Clue a handful of times and only have seen really the same ending. So, (laughs) I didn't see it on Blu-ray, obviously. I didn't even see it on DVD. I saw this shit on fucking Network TV USA or TNT when I was like... It's always been the same. Always been the same. Yeah, I mean, they probably so, just stuck with it like that because it might have been something that confused people, but that's the only yeah. story that I know about it. Um, um, moving on to movie news, though. So Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, they're going to be Holmes and Watson for Gary Sanchez over at Sony, which is going to be directed by Eden Cohen, uh, not the one from the Cohen brothers, uh, as Bill and Murray uh, horribly realized, I guess, when he was doing Garfield. Um, yeah, th- this is the guy, though, he directed Get Hard, which I thought was kind of funny, but he's also more notable for writing Tropic Thunder and Idiocracy. Uh, I I don't know, you know, as, as far as talent, you know, these are funny guys, and they could put together a good movie. And, you know, this is being done at Gary Sanchez, which is, uh, uh, what's his name, Adam McKay's production company. So, hey, if anyone, like, hopefully this could be something that's as funny and memorable as the classics that we have, like Talladega Nights or Step Brothers um, or, hell, even Anchorman. But, you know, we'll see. You know, I'm all on board for this. I completely will get behind and shut up and take my money when it <laughs> comes to anything that has Will Ferrell and John C. Riley standing side by side co-starring in the same movie when was the last Just time they were together it was Step Brothers, wasn't Step it Brothers. wow and, that's been a long I mean, time Ooh, actually no if you could consider anchorman 2 when john c Riley played the ghost of stonewall jackson okay yeah but i mean like as a pairing that, that's more of a exactly, cameo yeah so i mean and yeah. hey that was cool but yeah yeah but i mean my only issue that I'm going to have with this, and I just hope that they'll find some way to figure it out, but can either one of them really pull off a British accent? I, you know, it's not going to be one that you're going to take seriously. It has to be a comedy, so it could be a bad British accent that you laugh at, and I, I don't know, as long as the writing is good enough and it's fun and it's witty, then yeah, I mean, I, you know, this isn't something I'm worried about, because this is not something I'm excited, but... I just know that these guys at least have talent and, you know, Get Hard is not 
like a movie that I love, but I I found it pretty enjoyable and I laughed because I just find racist human f- humor funny. <laughs> Um, I mean, and also Kevin Hart was just a good part of that dichotomy between um, him and Will Ferrell, and they played off each other really well. But yeah, did you see that movie? I did, and, and? it was funny. Yeah, it's, it's decently it. funny, right? It's like a good airplane movie. You pop it in when you got nothing else to do, or you watch it when it's on Comedy Central. <laughs> it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's enough to make you kind of laugh. I think I'm just completely desensitized by Kevin Hart, and I don't want to say I hate the guy. But I can easily say I can't fucking stand him. Just because he just tends to kind of play the same one-note jokes. I'm short. Well, see, I'm that's black. kind of what I liked I'm about short, Get black. Hard, though, like... is that like this is the one where he wasn't the butt of the jokes. He wasn't the laughing stock. That Will Ferrell yeah, was the was. guy that you would bag on. But that's the thing. If you remember in the beginning when Will Ferrell goes to approach him... Yeah, says, and, and then it... And he says, like, oh, is it because I'm black? But that's the thing. Then the tables turn. And, like, I mean, yes, the, there's the race jokes, which are obvious. And he always, you know, there's always these uh, these damn white people. They never tell me anything. Like, I, I think literally just the fucking trailer for what was it? Um, Grudge Match. Like, that's, that's the note that that trailer ends on is a joke like that. Or even the trailer for uh, Top 5, the Chris Rock movie. Like, the, they highlight trailers for all the Kevin... Um, hard stuff you know even though i haven't seen every single movie he's done but they sure as hell love to highlight those kind of jokes um yeah. i mean but yeah you know the guy does make me laugh even if his movie choices are not the ones that i always love and you know for, from what i heard um th- that movie what was it that he just did with the rock that came out this summer central um, intelligence yeah i heard it was pretty funny honestly so i heard the same thing and i yeah, was I something wanted to watch it yeah, it's. I heard it was like a nice sort of mid-level level comedy that came out in the middle of the summer. That's kind of like some like what Horrible Bosses was, and that that's how yeah. much people liked it. So, yeah, you know, I'm curious to check it out when I can when it hits uh, DVD and streaming. But yeah. um, yeah, I mean, hey, Holmes and Watson. I mean, th- there is definitely potential for something here that's funny and witty. I'm in. And that's I all gotta say is I'm in. I can't say I'm in, but I want I want to say like there's the chances that a trailer could sell me on it and make me laugh my ass off or just completely distance me and make me go, eh, nah, I'm, I'm not going to see that, at least not in theaters. But um, here's the thing, is that if you got, we have to keep remembering that movie trailers are in, are made to to make us buy tickets. I do, I do but I'm just and saying, you know, you can't help but... They're going to show the best parts and they're going to give away all the best jokes in the trailer and you're going to sit there and you could be like, Eh, it's okay, and I'll be like, no, fuck you, man, I'm on board, this is gonna be hilarious. Well, it's really, you know, I can't help but look at movie marketing, not by judging the movie based on that, but movie marketing is out there because that's what they want me to see to get me to buy a ticket. I'm yeah. sure I will see it at this point, but you know, that's that's kind of how I am with comedies, just either something works for me or it doesn't. So, I, I mean, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, I can tell you, something that I'm probably gonna see in theaters right when it comes out is uh, Live By Night, and this is likely, this is the Ben Affleck movie um, that was slated to be released in January for some reason, which evidently that's being fixed now because it's, it's still in December. Yeah, it's still going wide on January 13th of next year, but they're releasing it in December to give it an Oscar push, which is not, you know, I, I think January 13th, that's the exact same weekend that American Sniper came out and uh, made ass loads of cash um you know although i would chalk that up to great marketing because that that teaser was perfect that was all you needed and that's a great trailer that gets people's attention without giving them too much stuff so hey that and that ended up being the highest grossing movie of that year and it was rated r so take take note hollywood seriously i haven't seen that movie uh, it's it's really good, honestly. Um, you know, you know, like not not fucking amazing or anything, but uh, it's a really solid uh, sort of character study war flick that is at least worth seeing once in your life. Mm. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I thought Bradley Poop Cooper. You know, I I don't give a shit about the Oscars, but yeah, he was really good in it and just gave it his all. And it's probably one of the most exciting Clint Eastwood movies in what like five years. The the best one I saw since Gran Torino, at least. Um. But yeah, uh, Live by Night is getting an early release, and this is Ben Affleck's latest flick, and dude, I love the town, I love Gone Baby Gone, I really like Argo, so fuck yeah, I want to see it. I mean, he yeah. was able to squeeze time in between playing Batman, I, I love that you know, he's able to still do that, and I want to see him, I want to see what he's got. 
I agree. I mean, I'm really excited for uh, the accountant as well. Yeah. Because he's playing, what is he playing? Uh, someone who's autistic, I believe. Yeah, no, I, funny yeah. enough, I did see the trailer for that um, right before uh, Don't Think Twice at the Alamo. And uh, yeah, it looks interesting. It's from the guy that did Warrior, which, um, you know, not a sports movie, yeah. but really curious to see how that's going to turn out. I mean, Ben Affleck's not a guy that's known to make bad choices. Well, actually, fuck, what was that movie again <laughs> with Justin Timberlake right Daniel? before he played Batman? Um, oh, fuck you. We did a podcast on that, by the way, and we just, I mean, that was also a really fun episode on the director's cut, and that movie is fucking great, you guys. You should check out the director's cut. Not the theatrical, but the director's cut. I'm fucking serious. I have always said to you that after watching the director's cut, Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I'm right, yeah, see, exactly. I tell that to everybody, and they just come back to me, and they're like, yeah, you're right. But here's the thing, is that as much as I enjoy... The director's cut of Daredevil. It is still fun to just throw that little jab saying Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. People love to like, do that. Ah, it's shit. it's like people now, like you know, even when I talk about Batman versus Superman in a serious context, that's like you know, it, and it's it's fun to talk about. And we end up going like, yeah, we respect the movie well enough, especially after the Ultimate Edition. And then later on, you just when casually bring it up, they go like, oh yeah, that's still a piece of shit. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Come on, stop throwing punching. Stop punching it just because it's so easy at this point because everyone does it. Like, it's not that bad. You fucking know it. Shut up. Here's the thing that I'm quite, you know, interested by is that you tend to enjoy yes. director's, cut move, director's cuts of movies that aren't so great. That's not Case true, but okay. is Daredevil. Another one. It's a great movie. The, no, the it, it's it's a great movie, mix. and the director's cut is the one oh, that you can I'm... tell that's the movie they set out to make. Even in no, the theatrical absolutely. cut, you can find flourishes of a really well-made, really, really stylistically well-realized movie that just isn't complete because there's so many holes that were taken out, which should never have been taken out to begin with. So, I mean, it's a competently made movie that is fully realized in a different version of it. And any issues that you may have with the movie, at least criticize the director's cut because that is what the movie is supposed to be. It's it's I not agree. a better cut just because it's a director's cut. No, I no, I agree with what you're saying, you know? Mm-hmm. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because when you saw Batman Superman, yeah. you just kind of were like, you walked out and you apparently were thinking, eh, it was all right. You really weren't impressed. But I, that, keep in mind, I saw I something loved. completely different than the rest of the world saw. Yeah, that you got to remember. I personally loved Batman Superman. I saw I saw mm-hmm. that shit three times in theaters. Mm-hmm. So no, and like I most mean, people that I know, like unless I knew that they would have biases going in, like I, I think even you know Brian, it, it was somewhat positive at least in, on the last part of that movie, even though he was kind of bored on the first half. And like, there's a lot of people that at least I know personally that were like. Yeah, it's it's it could have been better, but at least there was stuff in it that that you know you still can't help but geek over. Um, but the ultimate addition of that movie again, like at least at least it gives Superman a fucking story and a fucking reason to be there instead of just kind of bringing him up. And you know, there's the points where you see why he's useful in the story, but just there's that, and then also Lex Luthor is fucking really vital to the story now instead of being like this kind of annoying douchebag, which I liked anyway because I like villains that chew scenery, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, okay. What what other points do you have before I get to the next item? Was is it All just I was Daredevil? Just say is that you tend to gravitate yourself towards the either director's cut, an extended cut, because that's what I'm, Daredevil did. To but you, I'm the that, exact opposite, though. Usually, I say no I to extended cuts and unrated cuts. I I only defend them when I'm like really serious on stuff. Like like there's what there's an extended cut of uh, Fury of Fast Five on the Blu-ray. Or, or the yeah. unrated cut again into the Greek. Longer. Yeah, and it's it's like yeah, I, I don't say watch that. So it's like you know for that I just stick with the theatrical cut. If I love the theatrical the first time, I stick with that. If I'm told to at least give the director's cut a chance or whatever it is, then yeah, I'll give it a shot. But when it's something so radically different, and it's not just like a bunch of shit added in for the sake of it, then yeah, like I will. I tend to defend those versions because they do tend to be better actually. 
like they tend to be far better realized and the theatrical cut just ends up being that theatrical cut that got cut down for whatever reason at that point well you can honestly blame warner brothers because warner brothers flat out said no one's gonna sit in the theater for three and a half hours yeah, well, you know, I, I can't say that they're wrong either with modern audiences' attention span. Like, I would have. I mean... Uh, absolutely. Honestly, I mean, I'm I'm about to sit in the theater for, like, three and a half hours next weekend when I'm seeing Lawrence of Arabia in 70 millimeters. So, <laughs> fuck, man. Um, yeah, but a- anyway, uh, what else have we got here? Still on Ben Affleck. Um and continuing with what Brian Gillis, uh, you know, he's, I'm, I'm reading his notes and how he words things, but he's a guy that really loves murder mysteries, uh, you know, or just mysteries in general. Talks about them a lot, you know, um, like Paper Towns, that was a movie that he really dug because it was that high school angle that ended up becoming a mystery. And I saw it too, and it was a really good movie. But Ben Affleck, his next movie after Live By Night is going to be the witness for the prosecution um, over at Fox which he's going to direct and produce and star in. And it's the third Agatha Christie film that's in development right now. Um, I'm really not sure. Like, first off, I've seen the Billy Wilder film with Charles Lofton, and it's a really good movie. Um, If you haven't seen it, then, yeah, I recommend you check that out. But it's pretty light and kind of funny. You know, it's Billy Wilder, the guy that did Some Like It Hot and The Apartment. Um, uh, You've seen some of those, right, Blake? No. No, are you at least aware of what they are, though? Um, I know that one of them has Marilyn Monroe in it. Uh, no, they. Uh, oh wait, yeah, no, one of them does. It's some like some it. Something like it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, he's made a lot of uh funny stuff. Like, what else has he done? Stalag Seventeen, which I fucking love. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, he just so many at Lost Weekend, just so many great films on his resume, but that's a light movie. So I'm wondering, like, is this going to be like kind of like a dark and gritty and kind of serious flick, like, you know, in the way that uh, gritty and real uh, Gone Baby Gone is or The Town is, even Argo, for that matter, um, which, you know, has its own moments of like some serious tension. It's I don't know. Is this going to be a departure from uh, what he normally does? And I have not even seen the trailer for Live By Night. I don't even know if there's one out, but. Uh, yeah, who knows how this is going to go? I have no idea. I mean, do you know, kinda, it, like, do, do you know back. what this is though? Like, um, what this is I about? Really, uh, I did read the synopsis on it when I, when I caught the article and I looked at it, I was like, okay, that sounds interesting. Uh, kind of does remind me a little bit about Gone Girl. You know, with but the this whole... is about the trial, though. So yeah. it's that's what I'm curious about. And there's another news piece that we'll get on with Affleck uh, later on down the line when we get to TV. But yeah, I'm just I don't know. Well, I you know I'm sure it'll be good. But uh, hey, it's a Ben Affleck movie. He's he's a proven uh, director at this point. Fuck, we're coming up on ten years of him directing Gone Baby Gone. Shit, well, I feel old, but. Um, I mean, the way I'm looking at it is Ben Affleck really turned his career around oh, after yeah. he directed Gone Baby Gone. I know, because that was and like all the Benefer shit, and yeah. It's honestly like, you know, like Kevin Smith. When he directed Red State, he kind of had this newfound love for for film all over again, for telling mm-hmm. a story. It was yeah. mainly after Tusk, or the, I mean, that was the one where he was just like, "Holy shit, I can do this! I can make a movie based off a podcast! Like, I can do crazy ass shit like that." Yeah, I thought it was Red State actually. Yeah, no, well, no, Red State. We were both at the Q and A at the Wiltern. Um, Brian, uh, incidentally, he was also at that screening, and this is before I even knew him. But I mean, yeah, he went on about retiring, and it it was he was very serious at that point, and like, I I totally bought him, like. You know, obviously things are different now, but I mean, yeah, I'm sure at the time, like, you know, I believed him. He was very, very serious about it. And this is before he really thought he could direct anything else. Because, I mean, yeah, you know, Cop Out was kind of that test of, oh, can I do a studio comedy? Can I do something that I didn't write? And evidently not that many people responded to it well. So, I mean, yeah, it, it did seem like he was creatively dry without the View Askew universe. But now... He's just fucking, you know, with, I have not even seen the episodes of The Flash, but man, he's just fucking going and fucking happy episode. for him, man. Yeah, but, but which um, everybody loves, apparently. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> I, I mean, you know, 
Kevin Smith, Ben Affleck, you know, pick take your pick of your 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 choice. But I mean, <laughs> these are two people that I essentially kind of grew up with, you know, especially Kevin Smith. I mean, you and me both. I remember my sister being in high school, and we're four years apart. So I was like in whatever the hell comes before high school, junior high, or yeah. elementary school, or whatever the fuck I was in. And I remember sneaking the VHS of Clerks. <laughs> And just laughing my ass off and, you know, being this kid who has literally no idea what a jizz mopper is. <laughs> and it took me a while know, to figure that one out, honestly. Like, I did not know yeah. the first time I heard it, even though I had the Internet, I didn't bother looking it up. And it wasn't until like I was probably like 19 that I realized, holy shit, I understand exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. I even I had the Internet. I had. Slow ass AOL bullshit. Dial up. Man. Yeah. The one that went like. Yeah. Yeah, that shit. So, I mean, Kevin Smith is the guy that just makes me feel so good. It's mm -hmm. like, even watching Tusk, I I watch that with a smile on my face, <laughs> in a very morbid way, just because I'm looking at that. I'm like, fuck. Here's this guy who's just directing whatever he wants. He's directing something that he wants to watch, that he enjoys. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's so ben wildly Affleck different from the passion, universe, though. though. I mean, oh, but, but yeah, like Ben Affleck too, man. Um, he has that crazy passion. So my, my whole point is, you know, Ben Affleck, he blew me away with Gone Baby Gone. I absolutely loved the town. I consider it one of my favorite heist movies. Oh, it's fucking awesome, man. Like, and, I'm, j j I'm, I'm not kidding here. The first time I saw that opening heist, I seriously thought that was on the level of the Dark Knight. As far as yeah. opening bank heist, I was just like, I felt it. Like, it's, it's fucking awesome the way that that movie opens. It's yeah, such a good fucking movie, man. Yeah. So, Ben, Ben Affleck, <laughs> Affleck, if you ever stumble across this, direct whatever the fuck you want. Direct yourself, you know, just standing in front of a mirror doing nothing and i'll buy a fucking ticket to see that shit so get a twitter and then tweet at him with a link to this show and there you go you have a better chance of him listening to this uh, i don't yeah, <laughs> well anywho but uh speaking of uh uh stuff that you love you're a big fan of the big lebowski aren't you I am so much so that when you and I were doing our list of shame thing back and forth you were you were the guy that basically made me watch it I feel that everyone needs to watch The Big Lebowski at least once. Whether you love it or you hate it, you need to watch The Big Lebowski just because it's iconic. It's hilarious. It's literally probably Cohen, the Coen Brothers' funniest movie. I can't disagree with that except for that last part. And I will say, okay, Raising Arizona. Sorry, that's the funniest one. Ooh. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry, just Nick Cage, man. I you know, I, I no I'm as funny as John Totoro is, as much as he steals the show in as much as he steals the show in the Big Lebowski, I still prefer Nicolas Cage. But you know, hey, what John Totoro finally does have going is apparently production has started on the Jesus spin off movie, um, which is titled Going Places, and it's a remake of apparently this nineteen seventy four French film, except it has his character in the movie. What this is about is it's about Jesus attempting to give Andre Tattoo her first orgasm before Gar... Uh, blah, blah. I'm oh, sorry. I freaking slur words here. I'm, I'm terrible at reading notes live. I don't know how Brian does it. Um, giving her, <laughs> It's about him attempting to give Andre Tattoo uh, her first orgasm before Bobby Cannavale. Or C Cannavale? Cannavale? I, I don't know how that goes. Um, Cavanaugh? So, so, yeah, that, that's... What? Cavanaugh? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that that sounds pretty much what I figured a Jesus movie would sound like. Um, I, I guess there is some credence here if it's a remake of a film that's already been made. Um, I, I'm assuming that because it's a foreign film, too, that and that's French, that has to be funny to begin with. So, I I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. Hopefully, I, I don't know how I feel about spinoff films, so especially with comedies, just because... Whether it's a spinoff or a sequel, just historically, they are not, not that good. Yeah, but I fan. mean the fact I, the fact that this is based off something, fan. though, it you know, hey, maybe it has 
uh, you, you know, some credence here to that. So I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, reading the premise just on paper, it sounds like a one joke movie with this character. So I, I would love it if it's far more inspired than it sounds. I, I would love no, nothing more to be proven wrong. But I mean, yeah, you know, with this character, as long as Totoro still has it, because we're coming up on, you know, it, it's 18 years since the Big Lebowski. So fuck i don't know we'll see but i mean hey he still has that wacky goofy side if he's willing to fucking show off a jock strap for michael bay in the transformers movies so yeah you know i'm, I'm sure he still has that sense of humor transformers movie i'm sorry oh. age of extinction is the worst you one. really think age of extinction is worse yeah than revenge of the fallen oh yeah i fuck it you know revenge of the fallen is a narrative mess but it's a fucking I, I, I'm sorry, I still... I'm that one guy that not only likes Transformers 2, I love it. It's not, it's a mess of a story, and, you know, it falls apart as it keeps going on, even though the first half is pretty decently set up. But as far as action sequences, like, there is true chaos happening there on screen. Like, like there is some carefully orchestrated mayhem there, whereas the action sequences in the fourth Transformers film, aside from that, like, uh, crossing over to building sequence which in 3D was fucking insane. Like, yeah, the action in that movie is just very lazy, which for Michael Bay, that's saying a lot. Like, that's really, really saying a lot. Like, he put all of his energy into Pain and Gain and then immediately jumps into a Transformers film that comes out a year later. Like, it, it, it just feels lazy, the fourth well, one. I mean... Like, there is no passion for chaos. Here's the way I look at it. You know, he did Pain and Gain. He mm -hmm. did his passion project. I know, and there is so that... much injected in that movie. Well, so so wait, much energy on. in there. Now, hold on. Before you continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, after Pain and Gain, he does Age of Extinction. And... A year later. I, I, yeah, a year later. But roughly, I just want to say that I feel that Pain and Gain drained him, in a sense. That he just put his heart his soul his everything into making pain and gain this amazing movie which he did do and that's what i'm saying is that like and here's here's where i'm getting at is that he did age of extinction and you can just it wasn't that great it's All a movie it. that looks pretty and that's the best i'll say but like i've rewatched it several times just to look at it in 3d and it's a gorgeous looking disc and that's i i think there's value in seeing it that way but i mean yeah you know Age of Extinction feels like it's made by a man who's tired and just doesn't give a shit anymore, whereas uh, Revenge of the Fallen, I mean, that was a movie where, you know, hey, you say what you want, but, like, especially, I mean, and watch that making of documentary, like, you can feel it while the movie's being made, like, this is a guy that has a writer strike stacked against him, he has so many deadlines and is under pressure and is just scrambling to get everything done, and it's like... It's like Apocalypse Now of modern blockbusters that, of course, I've as far as quality... That. As, but I mean, I'm, I'm not as far as quality did not turn out like that movie, but was a chaos of a production, and he is just struggling to get the movie finished. And even like two hours before the movie had its premiere, I think in Japan, he was still like doing different additions to the movie and like making certain like edits and changes in uh, special effects. And like the world ended up getting different cuts of of the movie because of it. Like that and Quantum of Solace, those were the biggest casualties of the writer strike in 2007. But, I mean, just, yeah, like, it, it is a mess of a movie, but fucking, it's not like he didn't inject every single ounce of himself that he could when he made that. Age of Extinction just feels like he's over it at that point, honestly. Here was my whole thing that I was trying to get at, is that when it comes to a passion project for Michael Bay, mm -hmm. you will see this man put his everything yeah. into it. And case in point is... With Benghazi. 13 hours, yeah. 13 hours was fucking amazing. No, and and he really another... restrains himself in that, too. Like, he t he was taking that movie seriously, you could tell. Yeah. Yeah. And that was... I felt that was a much better movie. That and he did. now we got Transformers 5 coming out next year, a year after his last passion project. And I, I think that's part of the trade off, though, is that in order to get Pain and Gain made, he had to do fucking Transformers 4. Because, I mean, who the fuck is going to finance Pain and Gain with the stars that are in that movie? Like, they didn't get any paychecks. They all made money on residuals, including Bay. Um, you know, 13 hours, like, 
that's a pr- that movie's budget is lower than Michael Bay's command salary, so I'm I'm sure that's part of the deal. Uh, th- that's a cynical side. I don't know this shit. I'm sorry. That's cynical of me to say, but I mean, it, it just kind of seems like it. Like that has to be a trade off. Is like he gets to do a movie for himself, and then he does one for the studio, and the studio has him do a Transformers movie. I kind of want to say, and that's it's perfect. But it's sad that, like, you know, he, you know, Pain Again and 13 Hours, they're not big money makers. They don't really, I, I don't think they gave the studio much profit at all, if any. So it's, like, that, that's part of why we need big blockbusters in order to finance smaller stuff. But, man, it's just sad that the system is like that, you know? Like, I would yeah. love to see more stuff like 13 Hours from him that he actually cares about. Yeah, I agree. But, I anywho, that... that was a Ben Affleck piece of news. Um you know, let's let's get back to Batman, uh, but not uh, Batfleck. Uh, Warner Brothers is releasing an animated feature with the voice talents of the original 60s Batman, um, which includes Adam West, Burt Ward as Robin, and uh, Julie uh, Newmar, Newmar, which, yeah, who played Catwoman. It's called yes. Batman Return of the Cape Crusader, and it debuts on digital October 11th of this year. I saw the trailer for this thing because I just found out about this news piece, and yeah, uh, it'll be interesting uh, just tonally to see how this fits, especially right after we got the killing joke. I mean, but, you know, it's, yeah, it's it's funny that we got them back together. Uh, I, I, there has to be something said for that, regardless of whether it's good or not, that it's kind of cool just on principle. Absolutely. I think getting some of the core original three back in any form mm-hmm. is great i do wish that it was an original piece not basically an animated adaptation of batman the movie well is this like is this actually yes an adaptation of the movie or yes. like is it is it just that they're playing with that tone and just that feel like not just of the movie and the tv series like is there an actual issue of uh, Return of the Cape Crusader, because I would not know this stuff. From what I've been reading is Return of the Cape Crusader is basically Batman the movie, just animated now. Hmm. Well. And I'm, it's, it is so weird because it's like, I, I love, love, you know, the original Batman. I love Adam West as Batman. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> no, we've joked about it on here too, and I just I love the fact that that's the movie with the exploding shark. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I have fond memories of watching that movie with um with stoners. Let me put it that way in high school. But um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I you know this is funny. It's it's like it's a cool news piece for me to read. I don't. It doesn't get me excited or make me go, oh, I have to watch this. I'm just kind of like, well, I'll wait and see how this turns out. And yeah, if it's okay, then I'll be like, yeah, he was okay. It's it's not like Killing Joke where. You know the prospect of an R-rated um, movie intrigued me. I uh, you know I don't have time to read comics that often. Like I, I like to try to do everything in one sitting. So I I know I had to read the Killing Joke, and I still do. Um, but I you know the movie could have been a cool shortcut for me. And on the whole, I still dug it, even though it felt like two movies kind of being weirdly combined into one, and it wasn't focused, which is a bummer because. There's parts of that movie that are so fucking awesome, and I was just like, holy shit, like, I don't think I've ever been more scared of Mark Hamill's Joker than I have in that movie. Probably because yeah. of the source material, but I was just like, yeah, f- you know what, fuck it, I'll jump on the Jared Leto hate just because it's the timing right now, but holy uh, shit, that fucking, like, Hamill was just fucking scary in that movie. You know, that's, uh, you know, I really want to just stop for one second here. Steven, what did you think of Jared Leto's Joker? I'm just very curious. I liked know. him. I I did, I, I did. no. I just okay. you know, as far as what I don't think we got enough of him to really have a strong opinion on him, but I think I he did. played the role as written, and that it is what it is. It's just you know we don't have a Joker movie. We don't have a Joker that's fully characterized. We just got this weird sort of East LA uh, gank type of Joker and. You know, I dig what I'm seeing so far. I he definitely has a place in a story that you can put that character in, and I want to see it. But I don't think that you know, if you're going in with the expectation of oh, the Joker's in this movie, that Suicide Squad is going to sell you on it. It's it's just a tease of what is to come, and I'm really curious to check it out. 
I'm all on board for him. I think he nailed it. I really do. I mean, you know, Heath Ledger, who knows where he might have taken the character if there was uh, any room for him. I mean, we all know Christopher Nolan said that he had no plans for the Joker. Okay, but he would have been in The Dark Knight Rises. You know that, because they had everyone in there at the end of it. But, you know, I mean, it's still a fine movie without him. I, you know, I don't expect him to show up, and I still enjoy The Dark Knight Rises enough, more so than most people do, evidently, um, to not be distracted by that. I mean, I think the coolest thing about Jared Leto's Joker is we are... In the first time in cinema history, we're actually going to get one actor to play the Joker a second time around. I is that true? I mean, unless you count Jack Cesar Nicholson Romero, dies. who's been around the whole time, though. But Jack Nicholson dies at the end of his Batman. But do you count Cesar Romero because even though it was a TV show and a movie, it's still yeah, yeah. it's yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Mark Hamill. You know, there's uh, what was yeah. it? He was yeah. Yeah, but I mean, so many people have done the voice for the Joker. So many people have. Well, as far as Warner Brothers cinematic portrayal. adaptations, though, yeah, I see that. It's not interesting because of that fact, but I guess it's a cool tidbit. I think it's very interesting because we're going to see him, we're going to see Jared Leto evolve the Joker even further. Well, and I don't know. The, we'll see because with all this DC backlash, who knows if they're going to really keep going after this? Like, I. I the cynical side of me just keeps going. Hey, there's a blockbuster burnout. People are tired of this shit, and DC's getting so much flack right now that you know who knows if they're gonna pull the plug. They pulled the plug on the Amazing Spider-Man, which really bumps me out because I would have loved to see that go- keep going. But mm. I mean, yeah, you know, fanboy uh, outrage is strong. It's stronger than most people think. So. You know, there are decisions being made specifically to try to cater to them right now, especially with the tone of the new Justice League trailer. I mean, it's like, come on, you know, who knows if he's going to get the chance. Um, I, I, I I really hope that things turn out well. Um, but, I mean, you know, I mean, just because of, like, uh, Jared Leto in Suicide Squad, like, who knows if they'll even write him into, the, like, the solo Batman movie or anything. I mean, shit, well, I don't know. We'll see. From the the sources and the rumors that have been going around, basically Ben Affleck's solo Batfleck is gonna be um, Batman locked in Arkham Asylum. Hmm. So that'll be very interesting, just because you know fans. I don't know if we have any fans out there that are some hardcore Batman fans and have played Arkham Asylum, but. That's a pretty intense game, and the fact that, you know, you put one man in a building, and you throw away the key, and inside this building is every known murderer, rapist, psychopath, serial killer, whatever you want to say, that he has helped put behind bars. Mm Mm-hmm. And you have one man up against all these people. It's 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 a pretty scary scenario. And yeah. in Arkham Asylum, the game, Joker's the ringleader. He's the one that orchestrated the whole thing. So, let's what's to say that Jared Leto is going to have maybe a much bigger role, a more a more a role that's really going to allow him. It sounds awesome to, to imagine that. Mates. I'm just wondering if we're going to get that chance. Um, I, you can call me crazy. Most people would, but I'm You're seriously, crazy. yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm seriously feeling like you know, with this summer, with me, many franchises just not doing that well or not being revived, like, and just I don't know, the interest just kind of going down. It's like I wonder if the plug is going to be pulled. I, I seriously do. I, th- I think Marvel will at least be allowed to continue pursuing their thing. Uh, then again, I also wonder how Doctor Strange is going to do, which I want that to be awesome, but. Uh, Anyway, we're dwelling on this a bit too long, Um, but I'm going to keep talking about stuff that you love, because I know you love that uh, Evil Dead remake, which I really did not give a shit about, but I am much more stoked for Fetty Alvarez's next movie, Don't Breathe. I mean, are are you excited for this one? Fuck yes. All right, well, here's a cool tidbit here, which this is the latest uh, to get Snapchat advertising. Um, which is a big deal, I guess, because it's the first time that they're doing something visceral instead of viral, you know, with like 
selfie lenses and filters and shit. I don't either. I don't care about it. Brian would be much more into talking about it because he does have it and he does enjoy it. Um, But this thing has a 360 degree trailer, um, which is now available on Snapchat. It's also on YouTube and on Facebook. And, you know, this is the type of marketing that I think we're going to be seeing more of. Like, I I did watch this uh, right before the show just to get a sense of it. And I held my tablet up in the air and I could rotate around and look around. Um, I imagine it's it'd be like what VR is, you know, it's designed for that too. And for the people that have the, either the Google cardboard, um, you know, set, they could do that. But I, 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 I'm not the right guy to talk about it. Cause you know, it's interesting, but you know, I was looking around the room and moving around and there's definitely moments where when I heard something, I turned to a corner to see what was going on. And for me, I, I think, you know, it's it's an interesting concept. I just, you know, and I guess the marketing is not going anywhere because people love trying it out and it's only going to keep expanding, but still we need to nail that. You can try that like on your phone or something. Just look up a 360 degree trailer on YouTube, then just look around your room. Like the concept of it's pretty cool. I, I, have you experienced this at all, Blake, or with anything? Once, the only thing that um, I experienced with it, uh, my girlfriend showed me this, this orchestra mm-hmm. <clears throat> and i think uh, who you if i say gustavo something then that know. won't mean anything because know, i need a last name the... there's more yeah, than one gustavo, gustavo out there something who the fuck <laughs> it? hold on give me like Not... two seconds i'm gonna look this guy up okay Gus, um uh, gustavo but yeah gustavo. I... there's gustav crocodile I'm gonna look that up real quick. What's that? No. D- d- oh come. All right. No, well, not, I'm gonna. Not, g- anyway. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, but basically, the whole point is that my only experience with this 3D viewing and or 360 viewing is just this. And I'm standing in my room, and so it's him doing like a practice orchestra. Mm-hmm. And it's basically you can you can look you know, around and everything, right? You can look around exactly. You can move in a full full 360 and you're looking at everybody that is in that room with him and i i thought it was kind of cool i I mean i'm interested by it like it's cool but i mean like and for this it was basically like i'm down in a basement (laughs) i'm kind of standing in the center there's moments where they have me moving forward a little bit but it's just you know there's moments where i see steven lang in the darkness and i'm kind of stuck with these two characters mainly um I think it's it's interesting, like, you know, just little things, like, which make the concept of the movie seem cooler, which is one character's sitting down trying not to breathe or make any noise, and then Stephen Lang just has a gun, like, probably two steps away pointed right at them, and you can just see terror in their face, and that's what makes the concept of the movie work for me. Um, I, I Like, I think it's interesting, though, like, I, I would imagine that for VR, it's something where you're standing there, and it, it gives you this weird uh, just sense being there. I could totally see it, but um, I, I don't know this, you know, this is just something with, with VR technology, which I still have to try out that I don't, just the whole fly on the wall concept seems so boring to me. Like, it has to be more interactive for me to really, really want to be interested in it. Like, fucking games, that's really where it has to get in there. If I'm watching a movie... I'm I'm calm, like you know. I I'm sure I could very well be using it to like sit in my own private digital theater, but I just don't feel like that's something I need. That's not something that sells me on the technology. It's something that just makes me think, okay, well, when the price is friendly enough and it's well commonly well used at that point, sure, I'll use it when it gets there. But I mean, yeah, I I still feel like fucking. If anything could get me back into video games, it could be VR if it does it with something cool. See, but you know, I think that that's. I'm kind of getting over it already. I mean, I feel like the craze is just... It's just getting out of hand. Everyone is talking about VR. Yeah, no, like, this is the year for it. Like, we've been following it pretty much since the beginning of this show, which is, like, 60 weeks now. You know, that's over a year. And, like, yeah, this is the year where Black Friday... You're going to see so many deals for this shit. This is the year where I'm talking to people at work about VR, it's getting mainstream, so, you know, it's it's going to get big, and the content is going to be made for it that is just right. It's just, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, this is a piece of marketing that I'm judging it by, and I have not even experienced it that way, although I'm I'm just curious, though. Like, I, I, I hope that there's cooler stuff than that as far as viral marketing, but still, like, I'm, I can't say I'm a fan of it, but it does 
provide an interesting experience for that movie. But the whole fly into the wall thing is just not something I'm interested in. Yeah. Yeah. There is one um, quick thing that I wanted to bring up, and this is... I'm super happy about this because I'm a diehard fan. Because mm-hmm. I feel that deep down, I am a redneck for for, <sighs> for for loving this. Okay, this is interesting. I fucking love to just sit down for hours and watch Cops. And you want to watch it on VR, is that it? No, I am so happy that they are making a Cops movie now. Oh, all right. That's like that wasn't even on the news docket. Like, what is that? It's cops. It's basically it's, a it's just the footage of like all the tough stuff. Or no, they're making like they're having like the uh, Ruben Fletcher is directing it. So it's like um, fake cops movie, like or something it's like that. Apparently, I don't know what they're doing, but. They're trying to make it a comedy, but they're doing like it as a complete reality show. I don't that really sounds know. sounds weird. I don't know. We'll have to have follow no idea, up on but, that. I mean, I love watching cops because I even, you know, just boredom. Just because I'm, I'm just <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, no. Like, it's that thing where when you got nothing on and you're flipping channels on TV, you'll just sit down and watch it just because. Even if like, I, have... I I don't dare say I love cops, but I would say I'm very amused by it when I got nothing to do. Steven, when you and I were handing off our movies to each other and we were saying, oh, we'll watch this when I gave you Big Lebowski and you gave me something, and I would always lag on him. I was watching cops. You were watching cops. I was watching cops. That sounds and... very much like you. I can't, I can't lie. And um, speaking of it. cops... Um, I, this is a weird segue, but speaking of cops, you know, uh, Harrison Ford and Blade Runner, you know, he's, he's a, well, yeah, he's, he's a Blade Runner. He's a cop. That counts as a cop, right? Uh, he, uh, yeah, yeah, ex-cop? yeah, detective, whatever. Yeah, he's no, but ex-cop. he's brought back on the capes. Um, Jared Leto is in the Blade Runner sequel. Yes. So yeah, we're talking about him again. Uh, you're cool with that? Oh, absolutely. Well, he, I mean, here's a funny note that Brian has on here. Um, it says, I, I just found this funny, is let hope he does, let's hope he doesn't say he was tricked into this project, too, if it doesn't perform well. Because, um, uh, you know, Jared Leto just, you know, as much as I enjoyed Suicide Squad and I was amused by his stuff in it, I mean, he just sounds like an asshole in real life. And he's apparently saying that he was tricked into playing the Joker just as a way to apologize for the movie now because he says he has not seen the theatrical cut of that movie but it doesn't sound like the stuff that he shot, and apparently there's, like, hours of footage of him out there. So, uh, you know, again, I'm curious, though, like, yeah, with, uh, you know, especially Brian's talked about it, like, we're probably going to get an, another Ultimate Edition that will be David Ayer's movie. And I I really would love to see that, because as much as I enjoyed what's out there right now, I still don't feel like I saw what was David Ayer's movie, even though I saw fragments of it. What we saw was David Ayer's movie. David Ayer has admitted... That. He's defended the version that's out there now, but you know, like that—that that, that that is, is one thing. I, 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 it's still he too soon to tell. And I mean, well, then, hey, in that case, I love. It. In that case, I love his cut of the movie. But if he says otherwise, like later on down the line, I, I won't be surprised. You know, like I mean, I, what. You know, I'm not gonna let like authorship ever determine what I enjoy, what I don't enjoy. Like, if he, if all of a sudden news comes out that there's a movie that's his cut out there, it's not like I'm gonna say I did not enjoy what's out there now. You know, I, I can definitely tell there's stuff edited by a trailer company. The first hour is like so sporadic and it's like a hazy fever dream, but I still liked the effect that it had on me. But uh, the main news piece here is Jared Leto. Yeah, a d- dude sounds like kind of a dick for the way that. I don't know, just the shit he's been talking about on the movie. Do you blame him, though? I mean... I I guess from his perspective, no, based on what we're hearing, but... I mean, look at the way they marketed Suicide Squad. They market that movie like that Jared Leto's gonna be in that almost every other scene, and they're pushing his character, and it's... I feel that they really... They were basically forcing his character to be liked by everyone. Oh, the, it's it's they a made, really interesting. They really made it feel yeah. as if, you know, the Joker 
was the antagonist of the whole movie. And it's um no, I mean, it's it's very well, poor marketing. I feel on Warner Brothers' end, and... it's misleading marketing. It's not poor because it clearly got <clears throat> people in the seats. But I mean, yeah, you know, that's part of why I try to avoid trailers now because, like, I mean, they can be awesome on of themselves. Like, you know, even if they're not like what the movie actually is. Like, I I do believe that trailers are honestly an art form. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, the the Wayne's World trailers for Suicide Squad. That's what I'm calling them. Those are great trailers. Like, there's trailers that I still watch today just when I'm in the mood to, like, see something, like, uh, you know, and just enjoy. And, like, there's, like, I, I, I still enjoy watching trailers, man. And, like, there's some classic ones from, like, two years ago or five years ago. Like, I, one I've mentioned, I think, several times was the one for Terminator Salvation, which I swear, that's probably in my top three trailers of all time. Like, the one with the fucking Nine Inch Nails song. Oh, like, j- just, the movie is not that good, but that trailer is so fucking well put together man just and i I love it and i agree and like yeah i mean just like uh, trailers themselves can be an art and some trailers can be more fun to watch than the movie that's for sure or they can both be fun to watch for different reasons but i mean yeah you know in in this case uh with suicide squad you know who knows like hey if i get a different version though i i I won't complain honestly but um yeah (coughs) just yeah i mean yeah um, All right. I feel, um, I, just, I feel really. Um, I don't feel cheated. I personally don't. I feel no. that the only thing that Suicide Squad did with Jared Leto's Joker was I wanted to see more of him. Yeah. And that's really what I feel happened is that he. They gave you enough of the character to like him. Mm-hmm. but not enough to love him. Well, you definitely want to see more of Jared Leto. I'll tell you what I don't think I've seen enough of. I have not seen enough Martin Scorsese flicks lately, or rather recently, since it's coming up on, what, three years now that Wolf of Wall Street came out? I mean, not soon enough, I think. Um, the good news here <laughs> is that China finally has locked distribution for The Irishman, which is his next flick, uh, just kind of an interesting tidbit here is that this is the first one of his films that will get mass exhibition in the country. And I, we talk about China a lot, Brian. Uh, I almost called you Brian. Uh, Blake. You did call me Brian, actually. Well, I, I don't feel like I put enough inflection on the end to on the end at, in that word to fucking finish. But, yeah, we talk about China a lot. Um, yeah, interesting, by the way, is that uh, Scorsese was actually banned from visiting China in the 90s. Uh, right after his depiction of the Dalai Lama and Kundun, which, you know, is not surprising because uh, China and Tibet, uh, not on great terms. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, hey, good for them. They're getting this. Um, j- so, yeah, just more big news in China, though. Like, one of the main things that we talk about is they're, I-, I mean, I don't know how familiar you are with, like, details, but you know <laughs> that their market is growing and it's probably going to surpass ours. Alibaba, um, they're set to break ground on their own theater chain, and at the end of this year, they're estimated to have about 40,000 screens in the country. At the end of last year, they had at least 31,000, so they're getting on par with our screen count here in the States, man. And like we just talked about last week, we talked about IMAX um, trying to build, like I think it was, what, uh, 300, no, 700 uh, screens in uh in China at the end of 2020, or it may have been like 350. I don't know, but I mean, yeah, they're they're really aiming to get a lot of theaters out there, man. So their film market, it's just fucking growing. So yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, that's I good, mean, that's good to know. Good for China, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> although, yeah, a, a lot of my talk is just like I'm afraid of China sort of taking over because you know they got censorship rules and like you know this is I think a big part of our Pixels review was that. Um, or maybe pixels. not review, but after the fact, yeah, Adam Sandler's Pixels. Um, that that was a year ago, but you know they uh, that's a co-production with China, I think, and they definitely made changes to the script to appease to Chinese viewers. So, I, I, I'm, my fear with the whole thing is like, hopefully this doesn't um, in, interfere with censorship Ooh. with American values. But um, I mean, hey, yeah, good for China. You know, it's it's great that the film market is at least expanding somewhere in the world. While here, we're not necessarily doing that well um i'll tell you what is definitely going to appeal to chinese audiences though and that's marvel 
Vin Diesel confirmed on Facebook to a live audience celebrating the 100 million fans that are now on the Guardians of the Galaxy page that they're going to be in Infinity Wars. Shocker. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, because of course it was going to be announced, but it was just a matter of time. I mean, that's the thing, is that it's been kind of known. It's like, hey, oh, they're in the same phase with, you know, all these other characters that are already in the Avengers. Like, why would they not collide at some point? Are they just the redheaded stepchild of the whole thing? Is that it? No, of course they were going to make it. And, I mean, hey, the fact that we have confirmation is cool. I personally, I thought it would have been fucking cooler if I was at a midnight for it and I was just surprised and then, like, they somehow hid them in marketing the whole time, pulled off an Iron Man 3, and then they're just there. Like, that would have been fucking amazing. Yeah, but, I mean, you gotta leave it to to Vin Diesel to just... You know, yeah, just man. be Vin Diesel and be like, hey, you're my friend. When he's not oh, fighting with The Rock. You know that. Yeah. When he's not fighting with The Rock, yeah. that's what he's doing. He's just interacting with his fans. Um, But that covers movie news. What we got here is some TV stuff. Continuing with Marvel, Um, let's see. Are you aware of uh, Running Ways? On FX? No, no, no. This is Brian K. Vaughn's uh, Running Ways, which Marvel is apparently letting Hulu um, uh, take a stab at the show. Apparently, there's already been a pilot ordered and a script for the season. Um, and this is being put together by the people that do Gossip Girls. So the the note that Brian has here is, oh, and it's yeah. interesting, is that is this the same MCU or like the, the Netflix Marvel universe that they have? I kind of, you know... Is I that going to be the same? Like, is this still, like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. territory? Are they all in the same thing? How do they keep track of the shit? Here is the way I'm going to look at it, is that I'm thinking that, you know, you have DC's film cinematic universe, which is why they're able to have two different actors playing the Flash. Mm-hmm. And then they have their TV universe. But the way that I understand is that DC has it set up as, like, there's different realities or different dimensions, right? Different realities, different dimensions, parallel universe, you Exactly. Know, the list goes on and on. There's but, multiverses. Yeah. And I think that with what they're doing is, I don't think that, I mean, I don't know the runaways. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Well, the setup here is that it's basically the kids of supervillains, and they're just kind of, you know, they're like angsty teens. Well, I, I don't know if they are actually teens in this, but um, that's the way I understand it, is that they're basically just going against their parents in order to not end up like them. So, that that you know, that that's basically what it is. I Hence, I guess they're runaway kids. Um, but, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. It's... We'll see. I mean, you know, the fact that Hulu actually has a chance at a show, which, you know, that's a big deal, especially since it's a Marvel show. Um, they'll definitely market the hell out of that. It's just, yeah, I mean, Hulu needs to, like, do a bunch of stuff. And they're doing well, I guess. They're making the right moves because they don't want to go extinct. But we'll see how this turns out. You know, I feel that the way that, I feel like the way they're they're going to be able to do this and get away with it is that these are going to be a bunch of essential no-name villains. I mean, let's see. I'm looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. And it just looks like... Yeah, it's going to basically be a bunch of essential no-name villains mm -hmm. that we're not going to be introduced to in the cinematic universe we're not going to be introduced to them in agents of shield and it's probably just going to be its own thing yeah but i they're probably i don't know it's i'm sure that they'll find threads to connect with it from episode to episode to say like hey you know at least these characters still exist or you could throw the multiverse excuse of but you know it's not in this reality it's in another one it's all connected in some way man like there's no way to it's like, you know, there's this moment in Deadpool where when he's being dragged by Colossus, you know, he just goes like, you know, oh, I'm taking you to the professor. Oh, which one, McAvoy or Stewart? Like, yeah, yeah. I can't keep track anymore. So it's I'm sure they're going to make references, but who the fuck knows, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's pretty... It's, it's, I like, that's what I liked about Deadpool, is that it... Oh, yeah, no. It no. was so self-aware that... It, the, the timelines were getting so fucked up. Well, that is a that, movie that comes out at the right time of superhero fatigue. Yeah. 
Yeah. It really does. All right, well, uh, talking about the CW, by the way, apparently they're doing an adaptation of The Lost Boys as an anthology series, which is going to follow the same vampires on every season, um, and it's go through several decades, from uh, 1967 San Francisco, eventually to present day. Um, I saw The Lost Boys, by the way, like recently, I think like four weeks ago. Um that's a fun movie, man. Like, I'm I'm not gonna lie, Cry Little Sister. I've been listening to it like constantly on my phone, like as I'm going to work, just th- through my headphones. Like, I fucking love that song, man. I mean, that movie is a lot of fun. I know you're just kind of like not into that cult, but man, that that's a fun movie. So, for me, like the notion of a show, I I can't say I'm surprised by it. Maybe I'll watch a pilot or something, but I could definitely see the appeal. I mean, and yeah, I just. I feel that what they're doing, mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm not into it. What, I'm the CW not... or? No, it has nothing to do with. I mean, because the they're CW. not my type of network either, but well, mm-hmm. then again, you watch all the stuff on there. You watch Flash whoa, and Arrow. Whoa, whoa, I watch the superhero shit. That's what I'm referring to. I'm not referring to Gossip Girl, even though I know you watch that too, because you got a girlfriend. No, fuck you. I don't watch Gossip Girl. I don't, I don't watch that shit. All right, yeah, fair I enough. Watch my Arrow and my flash all right and supernatural Mm-hmm. okay so, yeah, so you but, do watch their shit i get you yeah so i watch the good shit but i'm just i'm not a fan of the idea that you know we're basically gonna give you essentially we're gonna give you an origin story we're gonna give you a prequel a sequel and then we're gonna give you the sequel to the sequel in tv form that's exactly what they're doing Well, I do like the idea, like, you know, and that's part of the cool thing, I guess, just about vampires is seeing them exist in different timelines. So I and if it's anything like the movie, like at least as far as tone, like, I mean, because that movie was so much fun, honestly, like, I don't know, you're kind of on it. I almost made it a debt to cinema because I had a screening here. But Brian was like, no, I don't really want to do that. Um, So I, you know, it's really is it going to be one of those things that shares connections to the movie or is it just something that's going to be one of those things that has a title and then that's kind of it. It becomes its own CW thing. I don't fucking know. Ooh, um, evidently the scream uh, season is not bad. Um, th- that's all I've heard is like, Oh yeah, it's pretty good, but no one's really praised it. And teen wolf. It's the same thing. You know, people go, yeah, it's, it's pretty good actually. Um, but you know, I, I, I'm guessing it'll probably end up something more along the lines of those. Yeah. I mean, I actually enjoyed the first season of Scream, Mm -hmm. and I thought I was going to hate it because I sat down and I was like, how can you essentially have a Scream TV show without the ghost face? How can you have Scream without Deputy Dewey? I'm sorry, there's no ghost face in Scream? No ghost face. Oh, fuck this show then. I don't want to watch it. I know. It's just a, it's a show with Scream in the title, then. That's not fucking Scream. Are you kidding much. me? There is zero connection. That makes no to sense. The yeah. Other and than the fact that it's a referential show, like that references horror flicks. Is that it? Self aware type shit? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Well. Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, it's not bad. Mm hmm. It's, it's decent. It's entertaining to an extent. But you have this show and it's titled Scream, and you expect it to have either some characters, some characters that are related. Some connections whatsoever. There ain't no fucking connection at all to the original. I guess I want to say trilogy, maybe quadrilogy. If you if you're a fan and you throw the fourth one as a part of it, I mean I do just because it kind of ties everything up finally. Mm-hmm. But it also opens the doors. But anyway. Well, <laughs> you know, here's the thing. Uh, speaking of uh, movies that we love that get their own TV series. Here's a really fucking weird one, which is actually funny to me for quite a few reasons. Country Music Television. They're going to adapt Varsity Blues for the small screen. Now, you know, here's the funny thing is that I rewatched it earlier this year with uh, my roommates. And you know what fucking channel Varsity Blues was on? The- fucking Country Music Television. Oh. So funny enough. Um, but yeah, yeah, apparently this is happening. Um... W. Peter Hiff, uh, or Liff, uh, I don't know, L-L-I-I-F, unless it's misspelled, I don't know, I got it on the notes here, but he's um, he's going to write the pilot, uh, he's the guy that wrote the first Point Break, not the remake, 
Um, yeah, which, you know, I, I'm one of those guys that enjoys the remake, actually. for That remake's actually kind of a cool extreme sports movie, except for when it's trying way too hard to reference the original. Like, there's some shit that's horrible in it, but there's a lot of cool stunts in that remake, man. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's kind of a fun movie. Um, I, I'm not going to say that you should watch it right away. It's just like, hey, like cops, if you got nothing else on, you'll probably watch it and be like, you know what? That's actually not that bad. Yeah, I'd rather um, watch my dinner with Andre. Wow, uh, that, that actually means a lot. No, it, it really does because I fucking love that movie. I and know um, you do. no, yeah, it's it's a great. It, well, it, it's a great conversation. It's it's not really a movie. It's it really gets you thinking a lot about life and just stuff in the world. They're talking about a lot of shit that's not that different from now. But anywho, um, yeah, Varsity Blues. Would you at least watch the pilot for this? No, I think I have to. Like just. I, I mean, ever since I first saw it, that's one of those movies that I kind of rewatch often that just makes me feel good, man. I fucking love that movie. Like, I mean, it, it, I love it. I do. I mean, I I really And I know that this show is definitely movies. not going to be that, but just on principle, I think I at least have to see it out of curiosity. I mean, I enjoy Varsity Blues. I really do. I thought it was yeah. decent. For, you for came to my house, like, one time when I was just rewatching it, just kind of, or just to rewatch parts of it, and then we ended up watching the whole thing. Yeah. Like, that's one of those things I like having on in the background quite often. I enjoy it. Yeah. I really do. But I feel that it only works in the extent of... It's a product of its time, and that's part of the charm, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, this movie came out in 99, you know... It's I very was... much, yeah, like... it. it... It's... It's a 90s movie. Exactly. I mean, you know, what Brian has on here is that he would love to have a James Vanderbeek cameo. And perhaps it could be Vanderbeek's kid that's like the new star quarterback in this show. I don't, I don't know. John something. Moxon Jr.? Yeah, I don't know. Something like, you know, the boy meets world thing, like girl meets world. Uh, fucking, I don't know how the fuck that thing went. I just know that they have some sort of passing of the torch between generations in that. Yeah, but uh, I mean, hell, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that would be cool. Just I, yeah, it won't be the fucking movie though. But hey, this is country music television that's doing this, so I just, I don't they can do see. what they want. I doubt that you know this will be huge on streaming or whatever. It's not like Netflix is making this or anything. I guess their numbers for Varsity Blues are not that huge on there for them to want to do this, but. I mean, yeah, I I think it's kind of a funny news piece, and the fact that they got the writer for the first point break, that's, man, that's funny. Um, But uh, anyway, still on streaming, though, um, after last week, we talked about um, how Amazon, they're putting their pilots, uh, they were doing a 24-hour marathon on Twitch, and now they've decided to make 10 of its pilots available on YouTube and on Facebook, and these include pilots for Red Oaks, Transparent, Bosch, Man in the High Castle and Mozart in the Jungle. Um, I can't really speak for any of these except for I, I saw the pilot for Man in the High Castle and I just didn't care that much. But I've actually been watching Red Oaks recently and that's a really fun show, man. I'm like I'm more than halfway through it. I'm almost done. But uh, yeah, have you watched any of those, Blake? Yeah. Okay, watch Red Oaks because that's a really fun show. I am <clears throat> my my TV docket is so full right now i'm trying to figure out it's like 20 minutes long per episode there's only 10 of them it's like it's a fucking 80s like kids college kids spending their summer working at a country club man it's it's definitely got inspirations from caddyshack but not as goofy but it's a lot of fun is it raunchy and really funny oh yeah no like there's a fat character that's definitely just you know he's basically the seth character from super bad (laughs) <laughs> like th- th- no, th- there's it, like it's just so obvious when movies or TV shows do it now, where they're kind of like we have to have our fat super ba- get bad guy, like you know the Jewish Afro type kid, and yeah. that's what you got in there. But yeah, no, it's it's a really good show, man. Um, it, it's fuck who else is in it? I ju- I just watched um an episode today that kind of um it it was like Freaky Friday episode where this kid ended up switching bodies with his dad. Like, that's that's probably the most out there that this show has been so far, but it's pretty grounded in the 80s and just being a fun, like, teen comedy show. But that's, I mean, it was interesting, though. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it's a really fun show, man. Like, you know, I, I know it's it's up your alley. You should check it out. <coughs> like, just something to watch. I, mean, I kind of feel that I got so many 
so many damn shows. Yeah, see, whereas I don't have yeah. any. Brian is able to keep up with so much, and I'm just kind of that guy that's phased out on TV, man. Like, I, I'm so much better at binging. Like, this model works well for me. Um, but I, it's easier for me to get engaged with, uh, you know, comedies instead of TV dramas. Because, I mean, like, if everything is so goddamn serious, like, it's tough to invest entire seasons worth for me. See, I'm right now finishing up house mm. for the first time and mm, yeah it's a good show i'm i just started season eight already not a fan um but here i am it's like i only got like 23 20 22 23 episodes left and and then i'm done yeah. and then i don't have a show that I'll be watching every night. Well, hey, Red Oaks is one that you so, can get done with quick, and I think the second season is coming out this year. Um, so I I will be watching it, man. It's a fun show. I feel. I mean, I'm trying to find something new. I'm trying to find something that can really get my. You know attention. what will? So what I am, what my game plan is going to be is to finish House. and then watch Misfits, right? Because that will definitely get your attention. You know what? I completely. That's the one, man. Come on. That show is fucking awesome. Folks. Didn't you tell me that I had to stop watching after what was it, season three? Uh, I I have not watched season four, so you can stop at season three. And I hear season four is not bad, but it's like, yeah, at that point, you you can stop, I guess, if you wanted to. But then again, I don't know. Maybe that that season's pretty awesome, uh, and I just don't know it. Um, But I mean, yeah, if you finish at three, there's still a satisfying narrative and arc there for some of the characters. Because they don't all come back. Like, some disappear at Season 2. And then I think there's only one original cast member in Season 4. So that's kind of why I was just like, eh, I'm not going to keep going. Okay. But, um, I mean, and yeah, you know, it's it's not even like it's that long, really. You could finish the first season, or let, let's be proper and say series, rather, because that's what they're called in Britain. But, yeah, I finished that right. one within, like, uh, four hours. Like, I, I think it's... It, or no, maybe maybe six hours because it's six hour long episodes. Yeah, no, it took me a day though to get less than a day to get it done with. Yeah, they always um, each series fluctuates. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think I remember sees like series one is only like six, and then series two goes to like eight. For what misfits? I think it goes yeah. seven and then eight. Like they add a few more because I guess maybe their budget got bigger. Or who knows? But yeah, dude, that show's awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, continue with the Amazon. Uh, Jill Soloway is directing something else at Amazon, uh, which I guess this time is being a, it's a pilot for a musical comedy series. This is more a uh, news piece for Brian, but you know I'm just throwing it out there because like yeah, he is a musical guy, or at least he uh, he has more to say about them than me, and also he's seen Transparent. Um, but yeah, I mean, I gotta say, like, just based on her resume, I sure as hell respect that she's got Transparent, uh, she's got the pilot for I Love Dick and her marijuana flick Ten Acre Wood, um, I mean, yeah, just really busy and, like, fuck, I really haven't seen any of her stuff, but just on principle, the fact that she can get so much done, it's like, yeah, man, like, fucking rock on, keep making stuff. I have no idea. Who uh, she's is. mainly known for Transparent, but... Yeah, anywho, um, going to HBO now, Robert Downey Jr. and Nick Pizzolato, Pizzolato? I, I can't fucking read names, but um, it's, it's not a, a name. Yeah, no, the guy for True Detective. Yeah, I don't there's think there's two T's at the end of this. Maybe Brian fucked up on the spelling. Oh, okay, is. no, he's got it. Yeah, he, he, got to, he has his notes yeah, right. Yeah, Pizzolato. Right. Um, they might be teaming teaming at HBO on a TV show as part of the of uh, Pizzolatto's overall deal with them, um, and it's potentially, I guess, a court drama. Um, what Brian has listed here is that it would be awesome if this was secretly called True Detective season three. Yes. I, yeah, I'm sure you would love that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen. Here's Season the thing, two. though. Um, it's not marked as Robert Downey Jr. starring, so I don't know if it's in a producer capacity, but it just says teaming up. It is. It's. Uh, I think it's both, actually. He is going to produce and star. Like, 
in it'd be show. interesting then just to see him transition into the TV model. I mean, he's got enough money from Marvel as it is, but with the fucking shoot from Infinity Wars being nine months, like, how's he going to fit that time? Well, I mean, Infinity Wars doesn't go into production until when? I, Next I'm year? guessing so, yeah. Um, no, wait, no. Cause maybe, Inf- wait, when does the first uh, one May out? 2018, so maybe at least before this year ends, but... I mean, he has next to, year he is going to be occupied because, for sure. Yeah, uh, and then not to mention probably Sherlock three is going to get pushed even yeah, further. But then now. again, I don't know when Black Panther starts production because <clears throat> I know that comes out like a few months beforehand. So I don't know. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. But uh, you know, either <clears throat> way, they're going to be shooting heavily next year. But that's for sure. Yeah, and you know the. Robert Downey is right now filming, or maybe he's already done filming his bit for Spider Man. I don't know yeah. if it's a bit. I think he might be like an important side character, but I don't. We'll see. I, I still, and I I wish I could have seen this Spider Man in his own element instead of like having connections to the other ones. But yeah, and I mean, well, I'm still that guy that feels like yeah. I don't think it's bad. I just think Spider Man definitely could have at least been organically put into the civil war narrative instead of just thrown in there and then thrown out. But I've talked about that endlessly. Um, But you know, two guys, which, you know, I love sausage party. Did you love sausage party? I I freaking love that. Like, you know, even though we get all this franchise crap, like thrown out there, like Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, they're probably like one of the few guys in Hollywood that's able to put out like, just consistently original stuff and still have us laughing our asses off. Yeah. Well, right now they're teaming with Sonny Lee. Um, he's a producer, and I guess he wrote one of the episodes for Silicon Valley. And they're working on a pilot called Singularity at FX. It takes place in the future when AI has surpassed human intelligence. And this should be a comedy, right? So. It's already sounds Yeah, like a so. Yeah, what the fuck <clears throat> happens here, I guess. Um, I have you been watching Preacher? No? No, I haven't even started. You know what? Thank you. I might start Well, that I don't hold your breath because you know, I saw the pilot and I thought it was good, but it wasn't something that got me to keep going. And Brian has kind of a mixed relationship with that show, um, especially with, you know, don't, don't go back and listen to um, – our recent episode of dollar reviews, I think, or at least don't listen to the preacher part of it. Cause he definitely spoils how that ends. And have you read the comic? No. Okay. No. Well, th- I mean, I don't know how you'd feel about it. Cause he definitely has a bias there. And just as far as how this season ended, like, and where he felt the direction should have gone, like, it's not a bad show, but it's kind of a mixed bag. And it seems like that's where the consensus is. So I don't know. You're going to have to yeah. make your own opinion on it, but I, 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 he did definitely say something which I kind of agree with, which is that he's not a fan of AMC's programming in general and the tone that it has. And I can kind of see that because the quiet tone that The Walking Dead has, it's definitely sort of present in the pilot, even though the pilot has some really badass action scenes, especially one on a plane, which you'll fucking love that scene. Like, I know that for sure, but. Wait, what? What are you talking preacher. about? Yeah, but, like, tonally in places, it's kind of like that similar slow pace, like, really quiet vibe that The Walking Dead has, and I don't know, like, it's it just doesn't seem like it's my thing to keep going, like, there's not much energy to it, or at least I just don't feel it, but, um, you know what, yeah, Rogan and Goldberg and Sonny Lee, um, this thing sounds pretty funny already. I mean, let's go back to what I said Uh in the beginning, you know. Shut up and take my money. You know, you got Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg. They gave us one of my favorite comedies, which was uh, Pineapple Express. Not only that, but, like, Superbad is an important movie to me. Like, like not, like, important for fucking human history or anything or in the history of cinema, but just as part of my life. Like, yeah, no, like, like... What Ferris Bueller was for kids in the eighties or what John Hughes movies were, that's what Superbad is to me. Like that that is a high school movie for me. You know, like And see mine was American Pie. I yeah, no, I mean even though that was elementary school for me, so yeah. Fuck you. I, yeah. I had an awesome elementary school years. 
Um, <laughs> no, I mean, like, yeah, for me, it's like it's movies like Super Bad, or even I mean, you might laugh at this, but like Juno, that's equally as important to me as Super Bad is, or Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Um, yeah, evidently, that. Michael Sarah movies are what define my high school years. But um, yeah, anyway, now this is the part where. I am not at all an expert in the tech stuff that uh, Brian gives up or that what he voices out. So I'm going to try to keep up with this. Fortunately, we don't have that many news items for this one this week. So, you know, I, I'm not going to sound too stupid, but I'm going to start this out. So actually, this one's pretty easy because a job offer uh, leaked this week indicated that Amazon is working on original programming for VR and AR. Um, basically... Uh, according to this, we already knew that they were working on an app for Prime Video to catch up with Netflix and Hulu, but this is something that gives them a chance to really differentiate themselves between the two, so they're really branching out and just trying something new, which I don't know if, um, excuse me, if uh, Netflix has any plans in this. Like, I'm, I'm sure they're going to have to somewhere down the line, but as far as we know, uh, if, if this is any indication, then yeah, Amazon should really be the first for pushing for this. So, I mean, it's just more proof that, yeah, at least the future is aiming for more VR territory. Um, and as far as augmented reality, yeah, they're working in that too. I just kind of don't really, I don't see what they can well, do. Well, it's still something that's in its infancy. It's still <clears throat> something that has to be developed, you know, like we're, yeah. uh, we, we still don't know what the visual language is going to be for VR or AR, like in a way that's mainstream, like, there's definitely going to be an art for it that's figured out somewhere down the line, but uh, yeah, you know, I am kind of there with you. Uh, honestly, every time we're doing the show, like my reaction to this stuff is like, holy shit, like the future is coming and my mind still can't fathom this stuff because this stuff is being read to me like live on the spot and I'm learning about it. So I, I, I'm very curious, like, you know, I'm just kind of like there sort of keeping an eye out on where the future is going to be going. Brian is far more eloquent when he's talking about this shit than I am. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that if he's actually listening to this episode. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it does make sense though, that they're at least putting a foot into the future and they're trying new stuff out because they're Amazon's an insane company. Like, you know, they fucking got the Amazon echo. Yeah. There's fucking prime like streaming now. Like, you know, like there's, Fuck! What else is there? Like, what? Are, what are the other I'm benefits the of Prime that I'm not even taking advantage of? Like, th there's so much fucking free music. Uh, yeah, like there's that. I'm sure there's free books on Kindle. Like, there's so much shit. Probably. So much shit, man. Like, they're it, it's insane. Like, I forget. Like, I, I don't think about this on a day to day basis of how fucking amazing Amazon is. But wow, I take a lot of the shit for granted that I get from them. Like, I really do. So. Really, it's they're an awesome company and they're kicking ass right now and they are keeping a leg in the future and fuck yeah, you know we'll we'll see where this goes. I mean, they're doing their fucking uh, drone deliveries um, now. Like I've, we've been hearing about that forever, but it's still being tested. I think like there's still fucking, there's still the F it. FAA regulations that need to be set up for that, and we'll see where that goes. But you know, yeah, that's yeah, it's inevitably going to happen. Well, I mean, not only that, like you can get two-hour delivery, I think, um, depending on the area that you live in. I know I can get that because I'm right by a warehouse, but... Yeah, I think I can get one because I think the, there's an Amazon warehouse There's definitely one. Why, we both know there's one in Riverside. I'm not going to say why we know that. Just you and I definitely know there's one in Riverside. Because <laughs> you... No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I already did it. You can't Speedy, we that. love you. We know you're not listening to this, and we know that, yeah. <laughs> they still don't know who we're talking about, uh, so it's cool. We can say Speedy. We can say that much. Um, you can also say Simple Jack. That too, you can go with that. Um, also, I guess as far as the VR race, Intel, uh, they've thrown their hat in the ring. They're trying stuff um, with Project Alloy. Um, supposedly what this is, is it's a wireless system with hand tracking, multi-room positional tracking and inside out device tracking so pretty much everything that we want now um these are brian's words not mine but um it's probably not going to see a release date till 2018 when the next generation of hmds are unveiled um also windows holographic the os hololens that it runs on 
It's apparently coming to all Windows 10 PCs in 2017, which is me, so fuck yeah. Um, and I... So what, so what now everyone's going to be reenacting fucking Star Wars with Leia on their fucking if computer? If that's what that means, I don't know, I, I guess, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, hey, I'll, I, I guess, do you have Windows 10? Uh, well, no. shit. What? I don't know. I don't know. What the fuck? Do I know? Hey, well, yeah, hey you know, know what? The day's going to come when you and I are going to be able to, like, fucking, I don't know, have holograms of each other in digital rooms. Because I'm going to be probably living in, I don't know, either Canada or, or Europe by then. We'll see which one comes first. Uh, not as not as far as where I live. Not as far as where I live, but we're, as far as when this technology comes out. Um, uh, yeah, but um, anyway, they unveiled this news, so... It's just Intel. Uh, there's no input from Microsoft, but uh, it's a brilliant way to take the VR AR world by storm, at least before any competition surfaces there. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, if I'm understanding this right, uh, especially when you say that, yeah, like that, that makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, no further opinion on the matter. I the reason I really don't have much to say is because I have not. It's been you and me both, man. Um, I really, I mean, it's like I guarantee you, Brian is gonna oh, listen yeah. to this, and he'll be like, he'll just like, he'll be like, Stephen, what the <laughs> fuck were you doing getting this guy? No, 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 he's, he's not gonna do. No, it's it's not just in. that. Like I've he's brought in <laughs> other people, and I I we did a show where there were like three of us on, and like he's far more versed than we. Like if he finds a partner that. I'm, I'm not Brian. I love you, man. I love talking to you. Don't, don't replace me. But um, man, it, 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 it's like, hey, if he finds someone that's like just as in deep with this tech stuff as he is, he could do his own fucking show just based on that. Like, f fuck, he's really that deep into it, man. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys that are listening, you know Brian's awesome. I'm sure you can agree with that. Um, here's a random news piece that I found. Uh. Uh, not, not that I found that Brian found, but I just found it kind of random. Uh, so Ubisoft, they're making something called Nosulus Rift, I guess, just as a way to compete against the name Oculus Rift. And it's something that they have going for the South Park game, um, South Park Fractured Butthole. Uh, the Fractured Butthole. What this butthole. is, is you have a nasal mask <laughs> that just wafts this fragrance like into your face called fart number three every time that gas is passed in a debo booth and like i guess apparently like this is only going to be meant for exhibition uh, exhibition at uh, conventions um so yeah that's that's it you play this game and gas is passed to your face um i i kind of have to call brian out on this because his note here is how long until 40 smell generators become the hot ticket such as you know smell or vision and odor aroma they haven't existed in quite some time and his examples that he has here are smell of mystery or john waters poly uh, polyester and spike it's four but yes. th this it's not that this is going to resurface it's already around it's just it's around in something that's called 40x now like you could have seen transformers 4 in la in a 40x theater and the moment that tj miller has his unfortunate incident you can smell burnt rubber when that happens in that scene Bullshit. no like that's that is the experience that's been recited in that is that the moment that that what? fucking creepy ass death happens spoilers for transformers 4 which no one's gonna watch you smell burnt rubber why do you smell burnt i don't know rubber? like there, there's a lot of problems with that 40x experience apparently but my point is is that you know i don't think that the scratch and sniff thing for smell vision is going to come around like you know, like at least in the examples that he brings up, because um, that was that's a thing for polyester, which is a movie that you forced me to watch for a list of shame thing, and that that's a fucking weird ass movie that was enjoyable, man. So thank you for that. Sincerely, You're thank you. I'm glad I saw that. Um, even though I felt fucking weird at the end of the day when I tr uh, double featured that <laughs> with female troubles, it was like it was like the weirdest brain numbing experience I had. But it's something that you have to experience once in your life. Um, I, I mean, I kind of want to say that. No, no, run. It's too bad that the that. DVD you didn't that you gave me just didn't have that scratch and sniff thing. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, you know, like I, I don't think it's gonna be like that. You know, as far as bringing smells though, like I don't think that's. I could see that happening. You know, even with, uh, 
you know, things like VR improving over time, I could see that even coming into home, like, if it's popular enough or if it's subtle enough. Like, I know for Terrence Malick's The New World, like, I, this is a while back, I think some screenings they had certain scenes where they sprayed this fragrance that, like, just added to this sort of earthy aroma in the theater, which, for that movie, that's perfect, just in terms of, like, giving you a really, like, peaceful, ethereal feel into that world. But, um for everything well shit I, you know for south park it's like i get the joke that's supposed to be a fart but i don't want to be smelling burnt rubber at everything i i still need to try 40x at some point for myself but i'm sure i can tell it's not for me unless it's specifically designed for something like a ride at universal studios for shrek 3d or 4d rather um or fast and furious turbo charge if they did that yeah i mean but or, uh, well i mean <sighs> I thought 40x. I thought that's what 40x was. It was just the moving it's, of the chair. It's that and... like it's. I guess it's a combination of D box and stuff. You know, you got 3D. Yeah, ap apparently it's a D box. It's a vibrator that's set in your chair, basically, or or just like you know, speaker is a sub, I guess. But yeah, basically a vibrator. Like I know here in Austin, the Galaxy Highland, they have um, a 40x or, or a D box room. So like I, I could have seen her, like, oh, Star Trek Beyond in 3D the... at, in a D box chair. Felt a little bit of booms every time I wanted to see something or uh, Independence Day Resurgence. Um, I don't know what they got there now, but it's it's it is a thing though, and it's been here in town for quite a while. Um, but. Uh, yeah, that's our show for this week, actually. Um, Blake, thanks a lot for filling in, man. Um, it's, it's been really cool talking to you, actually. Well, honestly, man, thank you for uh, asking me to be a part of this. It's, uh, it's been a lot yeah. of fun. You know, I really don't normally keep up on the news or have anyone to really shoot the shit with about some of the, the, the topics we've discussed tonight, but it's been great, man. It's been a lot of fun. Hopefully, um... Hopefully Brian doesn't hate uh, it. If he's listening yeah, to it, man. That's my thing. Hey, well, I don't, maybe one of these I'm times, man, we can have you on and he will be hosting as well. And he will be talking about VR to us. And I mean, yeah, you know, hopefully we'll just be sitting there like wide-eyed little children, just, you know, very, very curious about the future. And I, I, it'll be like, I don't know, probably like the Princess Bride when, you know, what's his face is reading that story to Fred Savage. Peter yeah. Falk. Come on, man. I have not seen that movie enough. I've only seen that movie once in my life. Like, it, it's oh. not ingrained in my mind enough to really be able to quote it, except for the obvious scenes, like the Wallace Shawn inconceivable line, and then the, you know, Fuck my name him. is Ingo Montoya. You killed my father. <laughs> As you Prepare to die. Win. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's our show. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at S underscore MTX. And Brian is also at, at Brian Gillis. That's at B-R-Y-O-N-G-I-L-L-I-S. Uh, be sure to tune in for the Debt to Cinema this week, which is Ricky O, the story of Ricky. Uh, seriously, that movie is fucking crazy. I don't know what Brian's going to say about that. I'm really looking forward to recording that. And you can see that, uh, not see it, you can hear that this Wednesday. Um as far as dollar reviews, I have no idea what's coming out next um, for that one because there's not much on the release calendar. But um, that's our show for this week, and uh, tune in next week. Hopefully, Brian will be back. Good night, guys. Have a good night.